Hello everyone and welcome to my shop. We'll be continuing on with the engine swap. We'll be uh, trying to clean that engine bay out some more and uh, uh, get some of the parts off that 216 that where we can clean them up and bolt them up on to the 235. So well, let's get to it. stovebolt.com for a mobile little stand. Now I've already got a run stand I built for the 235, but uh, of course the 235 is on it, so I needed something else. I had enough wood, I just had to get the ca uh, casters, so I've got maybe, oh I think it's $14 tied up into it, so it's well worth it. Uh, because, uh, that run stand, I may, I don't know, we'll just see how stout it is. And uh, we'll go from there. This is more of a transport stand. Let's see if we can get him on there good. Give me access to be able to get the transmission off the flywheel and then the bell housing you've got to take the flywheel off but i'll cover that on the next we'll consider this an addendum to the uh removal of the engine Well, I decided to uh, tackle this sh shock first since I've got the access and cleaning it up and getting some access to the uh, to the shock and to see the overall condition I found a crack and I knocked it out the piece here that had rusted that was part of my front clip bolt, bolt uh, on my cross member so I've got a couple pieces here I can uh, Either try to weld in or I'll buy me a bigger piece and cut it bigger. I'm going to cipher on that while I go ahead and work on this shot. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Try to get this bushing in. Uh, we'll put a little silicone. Make it slide a little easier. A 
something here to get some persuasion going in there, up there, in there. All right, that's the lever action shock. I've got the other side done. Now, this is the fill plug here. I had to clean the threads on the outside and then tap it around to get it loose enough to unscrew it. All right, now he comes out. Now, I see fluid down there. Let's clean that up a bit. And there is a valve down in there, and there you go. That's the pressure relief valve that sits down in there, right there. Now, I'm seeing fluid, but it's supposed to be filled pretty close to the top, and it's not. So I'm going to have to put fluid in here. At this point, I don't know what fluid to put in. So I'm going to research that and, uh, and go from there. Uh, what's coming out of it looks clear, almost like brake fluid anyway but for now I'm gonna put the valve back in and put that plug back in just to keep it sealed up don't want any crud getting in there so we'll zoom back and the new bushings Here's the new bushing up here at the top, and the new bushing at the top bottom, and I reused the same arm. Thankfully, that was still in good condition. Get this stand out of the way. And on this side, we got the new arm, the drop link, with new bushings and pins. So other than getting some fluid, they, there's a, there was tension in both of them, so they both still work. Uh, I don't see any wet spots around them, so I'm just going to add fluid. So there we go. All right, here's that uh, the uh, Trunnion Bell housing, or ball housing, I should say. And uh, here's the uh, Trunnion, or the U-joint, the ball housing, the clamp that holds it. And this, uh, this screw is what goes down over the, uh, the existing torque tube and screws down right here. You can see the threads right there. That uh, screws that in and seals it. Now inside there is a packing and two steel washers. Uh, the, I got a new bearing seal kit for this to put it in. So um, 
But that's the, uh, the main part of the torque tool. I've done a little cleaning here, scraping. I'm about to decide to put the wheels on this thing and roll it out where I can get a pressure washer to it. It is just extremely full of crud. And uh, I'm getting rid of this uh, old uh, radiator overflow jug I put up there. It served me well, but I got a, a nice stainless steel one I'll bolt there next to the radiator. Or radiator. radiator. And, uh, but anyway, I'm doing, trying to get a lot done before I uh, get, get to the engine on this thing. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust that gearbox next. It's real easy to get at it right now. I've done other uh, models of uh, gearboxes, and this gearbox is real similar, so I'm going to use the same uh, procedure that I do on the later model. Now, I've already broke loose the uh, lock nut here. Now, the straight slot in the middle is the actual adjuster, and what I do is I back it off, and I take it to where I can't turn it, back it off, and I just put it just to where it makes contact and stops. I don't want to force it past that. Now, that's looking at about, if uh, according to the, uh, the uh, if we're looking at the clock via the camera, that looks to be about maybe two o'clock. So what I'm gonna do is hold that at that position and lock it down. Okay, now I'm checking the, the play in the steering wheel and I'm watching the pitman on them and I'm seeing very little play. And it's turning real easy. Now the procedure for the manual is to uh, disconnect the, uh, the, the drag link here to the uh, steering to where you just have the pitman arm uh, and then you take a fish scale, a scale, a fish scale would work and uh, you adjust this to where you only get about one and a half to two, one to one and a half pounds of uh, resistance on the scale for the steering. Now I'm going to guess that what I just did is pretty close to it. It was a, uh, I probably turned it as far as if you compare it to a clock I would say at least it was at about 11 o'clock, so I, with that free play I had, I went from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock before I cinched it down, so I, it was pretty good adjustment. Now I'm going to also check the level of the uh, grease. Now I've been keeping that regularly greased, but you can tell it's kind of wet. I mean, these I haven't rebuilt this, this gearbox at all. and. Uh, it's got the original 70 year old seals in it and I am seeing plenty of grease in there well not plenty I'm going to top that off now there is a lot of discussion on what weight of grease to put in there I've heard some say cornhead grease which is really thick it barely runs hey. Sorry about the interruption, but uh, I was saying cornhead grease, which is extremely thick. I don't even know what the weight would be on it, but I go with this 8090, and uh, which is the same thing I put in the transmission. Now, this is so. thin compared to what the cornhead grease would be that uh, it'll probably leak out but that's all right I'll keep a check on it I top it a little bit there you go it's draining down that's about where it is I didn't put a whole lot in there but it took some 
anyway so that service so I've got my shock service and I got my steering box serviced uh, I'm still deciding if I want to take this thing out and pressure wash it so we'll carry on All right, now we're going to fill the shocks here. All right. I've already loosened this. That's the cap. And there's the magnet. Now, on the previous uh, segment, I was uh, talking about this relief valve, and I didn't show it good. So, that's it right there. It's got the spring and the cap on it. That's the actual relief valve for the shock. Let's put him here. This is the uh, fluid I'm going to use. It's actually a multi-grade uh, tractor hydraulic fluid for, uh, from Kubota. It's a 10W. Uh, I don't, it's a multi-grade, so it may be a 10W20, I'm not sure, which would make it a hair too thick, but at this point, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. All right, it, oh, it's going to take some, it drained down as I put some in, oh, overfill. That didn't drain down. That is too much. So we're going to take some of that out. And no doubt when I put the, uh, so it wasn't that low. Actually, you're supposed to work the uh, lever as you're filling it, but and that'll get it into those uh, places. Okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take a little bit more out. Okay. Now let's put this pressure valve in there. There we go. And it didn't push any more out. So I'm gonna run with that. So it looked like I put maybe what? Not much at all. And the other side probably ain't gonna take much more than that either. So again. The way the manual says, this inspection plate on the back, there's three, three nuts, or three screws that holds the plate in. You replace the plate, that come, and the replacement plate has the fill uh, poured in it. So you actually would fill from the back side instead of going through how I did here. But, I'm not going to disassemble that one since I don't seem to be needing rebuilt. And I'll go from there. Actually, after, with some work, but they're working up and down, it'll probably need some more. But actually, you can check this with the front clip on. I'm just doing it with the clip off now because it's so easy to get access to. What you doing, my girl?